Good afternoon, Dwayne here, Dry Creek Regner School. Uh, we got some downtime here on the uh, on the trip. We're in the middle of the trip from Tennessee to Wyoming, and we are in Nebraska. We've been in Nebraska for a couple of days now, and uh, so I wanted to take the uh, <clears throat> just take while I got some downtime and uh, record some material and get it up. Uh, I want to give you an update on on the trip uh it's been a it's been an amazing trip it's been as far as us it's been really good we've got we started out with one two three four five vehicles and uh and we're down to four now we we no problems with the other vehicle it's just he had a limited amount of time and he got us this far and he had to get on back home and so we <clears throat> rehooked his trailer up to another truck and we're carrying on so we have now we have four vehicles and there's one two three four five six seven there's eight of us on this little wagon train headed to wyoming and uh we left tennessee the first night the first day drove all day and we stopped uh, somewhere north of Little Rock, just a little ways, just 20 mile north of Little Rock. Spent the night. We found a place to, to uh, that we could pay to board the horses, and while we stayed there, and we left <clears throat> that next morning. And that morning that we left, that big tornado coming went through Little Rock, so we just missed that. We went down 40, hit Oklahoma City, and went north up to Guthrie, and. Uh, it was they were funneling us off the interstate north of Oklahoma City, and we went out to where we were supposed to board the horses and stay the horse motel that night. And they were pulling out of that actual road and that actual driveway, and there were police and fire trucks and everything was just chaos back there. So they waved us on; they wouldn't let us in there, which we weren't going to go in there anyhow because it was all kinds of smoke. If you've seen on any of the news any wildland grass fires. Um, <clears throat> So we, it took us two hours to go 12 mile from there into Guthrie, the traffic, everything. It was just a chaotic mess. And that night, the, uh, the barn that we were going to stay at and where we were going to put the pastures, the horses in the pasture, and then we were going to hook up the fire, burnt that pasture and burnt that barn down. And, uh, so we bypassed that and uh, escaped that and the lord was looking after us and so we went in and found a motel where we'd put all the all the other people in the caravan been staying in motels and mom and i've been sleeping in the horse trailer uh, it's got a camping quarters in there so we're always with the horses and uh, that night we just pulled on the back side of a parking lot of the motel and uh, pulled the horses out and tied them to the trailer in the truck and just fed them and kept them out there all night um and then from there we left and we came up and we're up here um up in nebraska but there have been snowstorms are going on in wyoming and so we kind of hunkered here down to the worst of that cleared out we were going to leave here in the morning and go to cheyenne and uh, but now we just been checking the weather and they got wind and snow coming into cheyenne all day tomorrow and one of the cars that's with us we're all trucks except the one car and she only has <coughs> street tires. It's just a car with no street tires. And we're not in any kind of hurry and I don't want to get anybody into a bind. So we're staying here at this um, boarding place tonight and tomorrow if we can. And uh, and then Wednesday, we're gonna pull out and uh, try to get to Cheyenne by Wednesday and then uh, Thursday drive on into Sheridan. So that's the plan. Um, but it, it's been, it's been a, an interesting trip, but for, as far as us, we, we don't have any control over the weather. Uh, but it's been a very, very good trip so far. And I was thinking about that. I'm like, what, what is it that has made this go so smooth? You know, some of the things that has made a trip like this, you got, this many people, this many vehicles, this many trailers, there's three trailers, uh, traveling this many miles with six horses. 
and everything's just gone really smooth. And uh, <clears throat> so I was thinking about it on the drive up across Kansas and coming up into here about some of the things that has made this trip uh, for the part that we have any control over, what has made it so smooth. Sorry, trying to get this lit here. I got an old Meerschaum pipe. This one's an old friend of mine. I've had this one for a lot of years. You can tell by the patina on it. It's been around for a long time. And I've got some uh, Mac Baron old dark fire. It's what I got in it. And um, that stuff burns really good, but it's a newer tin. And sometimes it's a little, a little hard to get started. Um, but the trip, this little caravan this little convoy we got going it's going so smooth what are the things that i think that have contributed to that uh and can we learn something from it well <clears throat> the first thing i stopped and thought about the first thing is is i very carefully have chose uh who's with me who i chose to come along with me on this trip uh i didn't i wouldn't accept just anybody i didn't call out call just anybody and say, Hey, you know, do you want to be a part of this? Uh, I very carefully chose who would be along. There's no dead weight. There are no drama Queens. There's no, um, whiners, no complainers, no slackers. Um, and that's the first thing that's, that's very important. Um, and you know, if you, if we look at it like this, Sometimes, you know, you can go through life, if we're going to metaphor this thing all the way through, and that's kind of what we do here, so we'd be surprised if that's not what we did. Uh, you can metaphorically jump on a motorcycle and go across the United States by yourself. And you can jump on a motorcycle of life and cut through life by yourself. Hmm. Get that thing lit. But you can only do so much by yourself. Now, some people are happy totally and completely by themselves in every aspect of their life, and that's fine. There's certain truths and certain aspects of that that would apply to me if my circumstances were different. But when you're trying to get something done, when you're trying to accomplish something in life, sometimes you need someone to come along with you. Uh, and so one of the first things that I think is important is, well, let, it won't be the first thing. There's something else just come to my mind, but you need to be careful about who you got in your caravan of life. Uh, there's times when you just, and we've talked about this before, you need to just cut out the deadbeats and the whiners and the gripers and the complainers and those who don't carry their weight. Um, now if you're a daddy and you got a six year old kid, you can't cut them out cause they're crying and complaining and not carrying their weight. All right. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Um, uh, but you need, you need to be, if you want to get somewhere successfully and accomplish something, you have to be choosy who's riding in your caravan, who you accept in your wagon train, if you will. Um, because there are some people who actually don't really want to go anywhere. They don't really want to accomplish anything. They just want to come along for the ride on your nickel. They're looking for some adventure. They're looking for a way out. They don't know what they're doing. Uh, they don't know what they want to do. Um, and sometimes you just need to say, no, nope, sorry, there, there's no room for you here. And uh, so we very carefully chose who's coming along. Um, and, and there's, there's not a negative in the bunch. I mean, and that makes, that makes a big, makes a big difference. Um, secondly, um, everybody, everybody on this trip is playing a part and the part that everybody's playing is important. And I've got several on this trip that have unique, they have a unique ability. They have a unique job. And, uh, and so my part I'm playing in that is I'm letting them do that job. I'm leaving them their part. Um, let's 
Somebody the other day said, this thing is not like one. Somebody the other day said, I'm not going to take credit for this. Um, they said, people don't quit bad jobs. They quit bad management. Um, and so I've got like, we'll start in this truck. I've got mama riding beside of me. And uh, mama has the phone with the iMaps and Google Maps and an atlas. And she's plotting the whole course. I laid in some basic groundworks. I said, look, this is how many miles we're going to do per day. And uh, I said, we want to take this route because we want to bypass this weather. We want to bypass this city. I don't want to drive through that. Um, and we need a place to board the horses at night that has motels close by to put everybody else in. You know, I, I laid some, some groundwork. And so she has taken that and she set the course. And she's called ahead and got bookings. When we show up, we've got motel bookings. We've got lodging for the horses. We've got everything done. Sometimes on the trip, we stop and one of the other crew will come up and say, where are we going? Where are we staying at? Where are we going from here? I don't know. Go ask mama. Um, management, and I, I'm learning as we go. I'm not a natural manager. I don't like to manage. I prefer to just do my own thing. Uh, but a big part of successful management of this, whatever your caravan is in life, uh, is being able to delegate something that somebody else can do and leave them alone and let them do it. And if you are kind of where I am and you've got young people, then they may mess up, but you got to let them mess up. Uh, you got you to gotta say, look, this is what I need done. Okay, can you handle that? Yeah, I can handle it. Okay, you handle it. Now, if they don't handle it, then you come back and say, okay, what, what can we do to make this go a little bit smoother? But everybody has their deal, their strengths, their, their whatever, and they're just stepping up and doing it. So I'm not having to micromanage everything. The next truck behind me is being driven by Tom. Tom's an old friend from Kentucky, and he's an older gentleman. Uh, and he's been working cattle and horses his whole life, and he's driven all over the United States. So he has a horse trailer behind his truck, and he's pulling two of the horses in it. And uh, so uh, he he has complete um, autonomy over his truck and trailer and those horses. Uh, we, we went, we started loading his horses up. He said, I want that horse here, and I want that horse here. This is the way I want him tied. Okay. And I said, it's Tom's truck, it's Tom's trailer. Tom knows what he's doing. So there's two horses I don't have to worry about. Uh, we get to the end, I make sure everything's fed. I make sure everything's watered. I'm, you know, I got all the paperwork and the Coggins and everything. But in the actual transport of the horse, Tom's got it. And uh, we had a, a somewhere we came up and somebody pulled out in front and he had to make a, a pretty hard stop. Um, and, uh, and so one of the horses in the trailer swung around and the other horse got their head over the back and they got a little bit, um, just, they didn't, nobody went down, nobody, it was just, they weren't lined up like they should be. And, uh, so Tom just sent a text real quick and said, I got to stop and fix the horses. So I just pulled over and waited. I didn't have to go back. I didn't have to say, what are you doing? What is the problem? I'm like, Tom's got this. And so. I just let Tom take care of it. And uh, so, you know, and then uh, behind him, at one point, we had John. John drove. He's the one that had to uh, cut loose from here and head back home. And uh, John's a retired law enforcement officer. He's done tri prisoner transport all of the United States. He was pulling a U-Haul trailer. And I never had to, never had to go to John and say, John, do you need fuel in your vehicle? Do you need this, John, this? Didn't have to worry about it. He's pulling the trailer behind his truck. He knows what he's doing. Um, and behind him was Shelby. And uh, Shelby's my daughter, one, one of my daughters. And she's actually coming out with us. Uh, she's going to cook for us. She is a fantabulous cook. And uh, so she's coming out to cook. So she's in her car. And the thing with Shelby is she's got a little bit of her daddy in her. Maybe more than she wants to admit, okay? Um, but we gave her the debit card for the business. And because usually the whole crew 
that's not pulling horses are staying in motels and getting meals and stuff. And so I gave Shelby the, we gave Shelby the debit card. She's going in and actually uh, booking the motels and, and she runs around when we pull up to the stations to fuel the vehicle. She goes around and makes sure everybody has the car to fuel their vehicle up. She's taking care of that. There's just something else I don't have to worry about. And it's just making things, it's taking such a load off. Everybody's stepping up, doing their thing, you know? Um, and, uh, and so, um, there's a young lady who's coming out to help also. She was a student at the school last year. Uh, she just proved herself to just be a very, very remarkable young lady, a, a, uh, a hard worker, very good natured, very level headed, got a good head. So she's coming out to help with the house stuff and the paperwork and school stuff this year. So she is, she's with Shelby. And so Shelby's not driving alone and they're back there. And then behind, behind her, I got the apprentice for this year. His name's Trevor. He's out of the military and he is just, he has already proven himself. Uh, just to be solid gold. When we got this big caravan, he's bringing up the very back, make sure nobody gets left behind. And uh, I noticed on the very first day, we're going down the interstate, everybody's in a row. And uh, if I come up with somebody that's, that's driving really slow and we need to pass them, I noticed as soon as I pulled out in that left lane, he would pull out. And uh, he would pull out and then and block anybody coming down that lane so the whole crew could come out. He just just watching and doing his thing. He's he's got a mechanical background, so he's he's there for any of the mechanic stuff. Uh, and and so he's just he's already proven his worth. Uh, and then we got Will, my youngest son, met with us in Oklahoma. He's coming out just I don't know four or five weeks just to help me get the horses legged up and warmed up and settled after winter and that night at the motel um he of course he's been working horses his whole life so he stayed out in the truck with me because i wasn't gonna leave the horses out in the motel parking lot by themselves so we're sitting in the truck sleeping in the truck and after about midnight i said these old bones are hurting he's got this and so i went and climbed up in the bed in the back of the horse trailer because i knew i had a hand that could handle the horses. If anything, of course I would be there, but he, he just took a load off. And so everybody has their strengths. Everybody has their abilities. And that has just made a tremendous difference. So whatever you're doing in life, whatever your caravan is, whoever you allow in your caravan, make sure they have the strengths that you need and the willingness to step up and carry their weight. Um, and, and to do their part. Uh, the other thing is, is before we left, we went through all, we went through the vehicles the, where the oil needed to be changed. We rotated tires and had tires rebalanced out, new tires on the trailer, uh, had Shelby's car completely gone through and everything checked on that. So the maintenance was up. And we also made sure we had all the tools of whatever we might need on the trip. And so before we headed out, on this journey, uh, we took stock, we took inventory, and uh, we maintained what needed to be maintained. And uh, you know, maybe you're taking on a new adventure in life. You're taking on a new career, or you're trying to start a business, or you're trying to do this, or you're trying to do that. Make sure you do the maintenance before you head out. That's where time uh, in the backyard with a cigar where the pipe comes in and is set there. You said, Dwayne, maintaining what? You. You are the vehicle. You are the vehicle that's making this journey. Um, what kind of shape are you in mentally? What kind of shape are you in emotionally? Uh, what kind of shape are you in physically? Uh, have you, have you put your vehicle in the shop and had it checked? And are you, um, you, you know, people start, will start a business or they'll start work. They'll start some kind of endeavor and they're already angry at the world that they're, they're just, and you know, sometimes they'll start this and take this on because they're tired of dealing with people, which is why I started what I've started. I just, I got tired of working 
uh, for jack wagons that didn't know half of what I knew, but would not listen and would not accept that I did. And we're just messing everything up. Not everybody I worked for was like that, but enough of them, I said, this is enough. You know, this guy don't know beans from apple butter, uh, but he's happy to put all the money in his pocket and pay me $11 an hour or whatever it is, and then not listen to my years of experience and background ability to do this. He's never done it, but he won't listen to me. And I got tired of that nonsense. And so I went and started my own thing. That's, that's perfectly acceptable and understandable, but you can't do it out of anger. You can't be on that edge of rage, um, or fear. Okay. Um, or your health is, is bad. Your vehicle is going to break down before you get to where you're going. Um, and so we need to, we need to maintain and we need to do this. And you know, the other thing is, um, an important thing to, uh, to make note of here is before we headed out, we knew where we were going. We knew where we're going. We knew our destination. Um, and you know, sometimes it's like, I, I had a, I had a lady several years ago. Let's see if we can get this thing lit now. Here we go. Several years ago, I had a lady that she wanted to get into horses and, uh, she, uh, she didn't have much experience, did, didn't know much. Well, you can hear that Nebraska wind blowing against that window. Um, and, uh, she, uh, so we started giving lessons. First, she got a couple of, uh, of rescue horses. And so we trained the horses and then she came out and we started giving her lessons. So I put her on a horse out there and her horse was just kind of just meandering, just kind of stopping and meandering and just kind of moving here and then going on. And I'm sitting there watching to see if she'd figured out what, you know, that something wasn't as it should be. And after a minute, she hollered over her shoulder, Dwayne, I think my horse is drunk. And uh, I said, Betsy, where are you going? And she said, I don't know. And I said, come here, come here. So she turned the horse and rode the horse back over. And I told her, I said, Betsy, if you don't know where you're going, how does your horse know where you're going? Your horse is just kind of wandering out there because you have no focus and you have no direction. So your horse has no focus and no direction. Uh, and until you have focus and direction, you can't expect your horse to. And uh, so we did a drill, which I do a lot of with new riders. I had her come down on this end and I said you see that poplar tree all the way down at the end down there she said yeah I said I want you to lock your eyes point your belt buckle at that tree and I don't want you to take your eyes off that tree I do not want you to look at your horse don't look at its ears don't look around don't look at anything you lock your eyes on that tree and you ride your horse to that tree now if your horse kind of meanders off you turn in the saddle and you keep your belt buckle and your eyes pointed to that tree and you ride to that tree and she did and the horse did better. It wasn't perfect, but it was better. I said, now turn around and ride back here and do the exact same thing right here. So she did. And the horse did a little better. I said, now turn around and go back to the tree. And so we did that drill for a little bit. And after a bit, her horse was going. And I said, you see the difference? Your horse picks up their direction and their vision and their focus from you. You can't get somewhere particular in life if you don't know where you're going and if you don't have a vision and you're not focused on it. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there talking to young people who have no direction in their life and a lot of good advice, lots of good advice. But I would say one of the advices that I don't hear and I probably haven't put it out there enough myself is figure out where you're going. Where do you want to go? And you say, Dwayne, I don't know where I want to go. I don't know where I want to end up. Okay. Pick a place randomly. So well, I don't know if I want to end up there. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Pick a place, anything randomly and set yourself to go there. 
Now, when you get halfway there or you get there and you say, no, this is not where I want to be, that's okay. Pick a spot from there and say, well, I want to go over here. I want to do this. And then lock your vision on it and go do it. And, uh, you know, I've told the story before when my s oldest son was mm, about 17, I think. We'll get this pipe lit eventually. He came to me and he said, Dad, I don't, I don't know what I want to be. You know, I'm about to graduate high school. I don't know what I want to do. And uh, I said, do everything. Just do everything. And I said, in the course of doing everything, you'll figure out, oh, I like that. And I'm good at that. That comes natural. And uh, so we were guiding in Alaska and he come out and rode with me and he was really good at it. And I think he rode with me two or three years. And I said, I said, is this, is this the direction you want to go? He said, no, not really. And which kind of surprised me because I mean, he, you know, he loves horses and he's a good horseman. I said, okay, why not? He said, I love horses. He said, but I don't like people. And he said, I, I don't, the people thing is not me. I said, oh, cool. Okay. Um, so he bought a, uh, I don't remember, like a 70 or 72, a little short step side Chevrolet pickup. And he and my dad rebuilt the engine in that truck and they got it rebuilt and got it running. And I said, so you kind of got a taste for auto mechanics. He said, no, I don't like auto mechanics. And I said, well, <clears throat> you're my son then. Cause I don't either. Uh, your pa does, and he's always been good at it, but I never was and never did. So then he, he got a job on a framing crew in construction, and that wasn't it. And eventually he wound up, he he got really interested in EMT, and he got his EMT license. And uh, from that point on, he loved it, and he knew what he wanted. And so he stayed the course um, for years to go into firefighting and, and he went into firefighting in the military and then outside of the military he did um you know stuff on little part-time stuff around and he kept testing and kept testing and going in and applying and, and he just got a really good permanent full-time job at an excellent fire department in idaho um but he set his goal i'm going to do this and then i will find out if that's what i want to do he had a destination my destination is to become a very good wrangler. He became a very good wrangler and he said, but I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. That's okay. He got to that point. And then he said, I'm going to rebuild this truck. Well, he didn't get three weeks into the truck and say, you know what? This bores me. I don't like this. I don't want to do this. He rebuilt the truck. He completed the job. He had a destination. He knew where he was going. I'm going to rebuild this truck with Pa. And so he got to that fence post and he said, this is not the trail I want to take. So he got on a, that construction crew and he, he had a goal. And so he went to the end of that goal and said, nope, this is not, this isn't it. But he learned in that process, he learned to pick a goal, to have a focus, to know where I'm going today and to get there. And so he built that ability to pick a goal and to go to that goal um, and then pick another goal. And, and then till he found that poplar tree on the way other end of that pasture, that it's like, this is what I'm pointing out for the rest of my life. So you can, you can listen to the advice that, you know, that, that I give. Um, you can, you can listen to, uh, you know, Jocko and I'm, I'm a big fan you know, and learn discipline. It's very important discipline to, to get up and to get your life in order and whatnot. But all of this is pointless. It's all pointless. If you don't have a goal, if you don't have a destination, if you don't say, I'm going to Sheridan, Wyoming with these horses and everything that I own, and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to build this school. And I'm going to pick this person, and I can't do it by myself. So I'm going to pick this person, 
and this person and this person and see if they want to go along and help me do this. You see what I'm saying? You see how this works? There are some of you out there that are listening that are actually got a pretty good handle on stuff. Um, that actually have a pretty good handle on stuff and you've, uh, but you still don't have any traction and it may be what you're missing is that goal. And it needs to be your goal. Okay. And I know there are folks who don't really agree with me, but that goal does not have to be a college degree. Now, for some of you, the goal needs to be a college degree. All right, hear me out. Not because that college degree is the only way that you can go and get a good job, a job that fulfills you and makes you happy and supports you. You might need that college degree because that's the first time you've ever picked a fence post and said, I don't know where this is going to go, but I've got to finish this. I have to finish something. And when I get to the end, I will have learned to pick a four-year goal and complete it. Not go two years and say, you know what, I don't want to do this. I'm going to do something else. But to complete it. Uh, sometimes what we just lack is the life habit of completing what we started. Uh, and now there's some things in life you start, you're like, I can't complete this. I understand that you get some jobs and they just drive you off. Uh, I, I get it. But sometimes we just quit because we get into the habit of quitting. Quitting becomes a habit. Sticking with it becomes a habit, a life habit. Picking a goal and going to that goal becomes a life habit. Or getting bored and quitting becomes a life habit. Okay? So the journey's been, in spite of the difficulties, we don't have any control over. I have no control over the weather. We've been thunderstorms. Um, just missed that big tornado. The the fire in Oklahoma. The wind's been blowing out here. The snowstorms in, in Wyoming. We don't have any control over that. But we are still getting down the road to our goal in spite of it. Because we have a destination. We have a carefully picked crew. Everyone has their place and everyone is fulfilling their part. Uh, we've done the maintenance. I'm not worried about the vehicles breaking down. But if the vehicles do break down, we have a mechanic and we have tools. And so everything, everything is there. Okay. And it's. And it's going really well. And uh, so I just I just wanted to encourage you. I just want to encourage you today. I want to give an update, let you know where we were and how things were going. Um, I know the podcast and this has not been uh, real steady lately. Just because I, I can only do so much. And uh, so I'm catching stuff as I can, catching it as we go. Uh, I appreciate all the encouragement and all the support, everybody. I uh, hope this woofing of this wind against this window out here in Nebraska hasn't been too distracting. Um, but we should be in Sheridan here in two or three days. And when we do, I'll, I'll give you another update. Okay. So, uh, in the meantime, I wish you guys all the best and, uh, just stay logical, stay reasonable, stay safe and have fun. Cause folks, if you let it, it's a heck of a ride. It is a heck of a ride. And sometimes you got to ride through life like your hair's on fire. I think Pirelli's the first one I heard people want to ride like their hair's on fire. But sometimes, sometimes what you need is to just kick that pony up and let it run. All right? So y'all have a good one. And, uh, and we'll catch you next time.